it's going to sound a little pathetic, but I think I make up people that I want to hang out with. Uh -huh. I make uh -huh. up my yeah. friends, uh -huh. and um, and the more I know them, the more they tell me their life stories and their history, um, the more I know which rooms I want for which of those friends mm -hmm. to be in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and then the rest of it, the sort of the. Uh, their reason for being in a room and all of the things that we would call plot and all of the things we would call conflict kind of kind of bubble up right away and then structuring usually happens for me on the back end what i think right away and i do sort of through the writing of the play but when i feel like oh this is really a first draft i make a, a pot of chili and i invite actor friends to come over and read it out loud and i want it to be sort of very much mm -hmm. not in the hands of someone who I hope one day will produce it or mm -hmm. um, or even quite yet somebody who I want desperately to direct it. I, I just want it to be in the world of my of, of family. I've also noticed how, for me, the place that I write from, the location of um, where I'm writing from has changed considerably. And I kind of feel mm -hmm. right now, I think, at a crossroads creatively. I used to write from a place of utter conviction and um, mm. a lot of anger and a lot of, of um, a sense that there was something that needed to be said, a sense of urgency. And now having had a child and um, uh, many, many years later, I'm finding that I'm learning how to write from a place of sort of humble, not knowing and questioning and that that can be as active mm -hmm. and as um, important and potent as the <clears throat> kind of mm -hmm. kind of place that I'm, I was used to writing from. Mm -hmm. well, and then lately, I think over the last, not, not I think, for sure, over the last three years, I have actually have really profoundly, deeply not been prolific. And, um, and trying to figure out how, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how to be okay with right. that. Yeah. Um, and what I can feel is that uh, that percolating that I was saying that has to do with finding, w uh, c being comfortable walking into the next place that the play comes from mm -hmm. is what's happened there. Focus shifted to life mm -hmm. um, in a very real way. And I think I've accumulated a certain level of perspective that's going to burst forward in the work. But I, I took a writing hiatus. All the while thinking, right. I was writing just slowly and feeling very guilty. I've never worked out in my life, and I'm okay with that. But I, I don't think that, I, that I'm, when I talk about guilt, there's not like shame connected to it. And that's important because I don't want my, I never want my students to think that there's a certain kind of way, a certain sort of process that you have to have. But I do think it feels better when I exercise. It feels better when I write. Yeah. And we don't very often get to be defined by our aesthetic. Mm -hmm. More often than not, we're going to be the black playwright. Uh, which I think is really interesting, mm -hmm. but that's what I found I, more I, often. I think it's uh, my career has been 20 years in the regional theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm new. I'm new, with the exception of a, a short run of the Bluest Eye, which was at the yeah, Steppenwolf. Right. I'm new to this town, but not to playwriting. And in the various cities where I've been produced a lot, I've been branded there. But I, I kind of get to come to New York unbranded. So I guess I'll be the the person who writes plays about the complications and intersections of class and race, <laughs> and I'm from Chicago. I want to have um, my success not defined by others. I want to always be fulfilled just doing the work. And it sounds Pollyanna-ish, but I'm, I feel most like the artist I want to be when, I, when I'm shutting out all of the external noise.